Welcome to Mark and the Machines, the 40th installment. Honestly, when I did the first Mark and the Machines, I certainly wasn't expecting that I would say this someday. But there we are. And to celebrate this, my brother and me decided to redo a battle report from our own start with War Machine, which happened way before I ever got around to take pictures and ma take, make them into a video. Therefore, it will be Govold Irusk against Coleman Striker. But unlike last time, it won't be a small scale battle boxish mangled metal. This time it will be 40 points and the scenario is Fight Club. Enjoy! With a budget of 40 points and no requirement to spend two thirds on my war decks, I brought Govold Irosk, Alexander the Spriggan and Victor the Juggernaut who were already set because those were the two jacks that I brought in the very first Martin the Machines match back in Mark 1. I expanded the list by bringing Mikhail the Marauder and Boris the Kodiak. For troops, a minimum Iron, F Iron Fang Pikeman, minimum mechanics and a Grey Lord Turnian would have to do. Solos were the Wardog and the Kodun Lord. We dubbed the signalists Strikers Heavies. Cookies to those that spot the reference right now. Others will be told in at the end. He was set with Prime Striker, an Ironclad and the Thunderhand and went to also include a Centurion and a Defender. Besides that, he only had a unit of Stormblades with unit detachment and one weapon attachment. Round 1 went to him. Stry Striker gave a focus to each jack, then the Stormblades and each jack ran. Striker followed up and put Arc and Shield on the Stormblades. I went similarly. One focus to Alexander and Victor, except none for Boris. The Iron Fangs run up, Alexander follows behind them. The Kodun Lord power boosts Mikhail. Victor, Mikhail and Boris then run and the mechanics keep up. Irusk activates, activates next, moves up, puts Iron Flash and the Iron Fangs at superiority on Alexander. The Turnian moves and clouds the Pikeman and Alexander. Let it be pointed out that the Pikeman were in a very bad position with the Thunderhead and its pulse right just around the bend. I should have feed it at this point to just give them another layer of protection. With the feed I would be having about 50% of the unit left, left to charge the Thunderhead with. But at the very least this setup almost guaranteed that the Thunderhead would come around into the charge range of Alexander. On his turn Striker gives focus to the defender and upkeeps arcane shield. The ironclad advances, the centurion advances and uses his, uh, his unchargeable special action. Striker activates next and puts Snipe on the Defender before advancing. The Defender then goes and puts a shot boosted for damage into Victor doing damage. The Thunderhead moves around and pulses, killing 5 pipemen out of 6. The last one fails his command check, even though being in Eros' command range that is checking for at the 10. The Stormblades follow up. My turn. Eros upkeep superiority only. Alexander gets 3 focus. I take a moment to work out the correct activation order. The Kodun Lord goes first and power boosts Mikhail. Mikhail and Boris run up, Victor moves and the battle mechanics fix, fix the damage inflicted. Eros is next, feeds, moves, casts battle lust on the remaining pikemen who automatically rallies due to becoming fearless and takes a pot shot at the Thunderhead for no effect. The pikeman charges the thunderhead doing a small bit of damage, then Alexander charges and wrecks the thunderhead with some good rolling and three additional warlands attacks. The turnian moves up but is out of range and thus only casts further blizzards. In round 3 striker upkeeps, upkeeps arcane shield only. Once again he gives focus to the defender and to the ironclad as well. The defender takes another shot at Victor for a similar result like last time. The Centurion pokes Mikael to little effect. The Ironclad charges, does the Trammer attack knocking down Victor and Mikael, but the additional Hammer attack only does a little damage. Let it be said here that his damage roach were consistently bad. The Stormblades charge an assault, frying the pikemen on their first try and then nickling and diving away at Alexander. Striker then advances and feeds. Ok, I'm on. I spot a small assassination vector and decide to take my chances. Ch chances. Superiority is upkept and Alexander gets 3 focus, Victor gets 1. Irusk activates first and pulls over to the right in case things go dicey on the left. The Turnion follows clouding stuff. The Kodun Nord power boosts Mikhail. Mikhail forfeits movement to stand up and combo slams the Centurion. 
However, the damage is minimal due to Striker's feet, even though boosted, and he is only slammed for 1 inch. Boris then walks and attacks the Centurion, doing no damage, but he successfully throws him with a chain attack at the defender. But the way he deviated, it was too bad that he didn't ex actually deviate another inch onto Striker, but... Uh. Victor stands up and pounds on the Ironclad with initial attacks and extra attacks from Focus, but it's not exactly aus outstanding. The mechanics fix more damage on both Mikael and Victor. Alexander tramples through the Stormblade right into Striker's face. Too bad that I couldn't trample him as well. And the two free strikes you suffers do another bit of damage, but nothing crucial is hurt. I then buy Warlands attacks, out of which one hits Striker and takes him to about 50%, but the second one misses him. Round 4. Striker drops Arcane Shield. He gives focus to the Defender, the Centurion, the Ironclad. Knockdown on the Centurion is shaken. The Stormblades turn around and attack Alexander, damaging him enough so that the charge from the Defender takes him out. The Centurion charges back into the fray, damaging Mikael, and the Ironclad again tremors and hammers Victor. I give focus to Victor, upkeep Iron Flesh, and Eris moves to slap superiority on Mikael. The mechanics fix more damage. The Turnion then frostbites the Ironclad. Victor takes out his hammer arm with the Ice Axe. Mikael slams the Centurion again, doing some noticeable damage this time, but only slamming him for 2 inches. Boris walks up to deal with it, hits and damages, but the two-handed throw strength, strength check with, whiffs with snake eyes. Round 5. Striker gives two focus to the Defender, two to the Ironclad. The Centurion pokes Boris. The Ironclad spends the focus to initiate a one-handed throw, and oh boy, he wins the strength duel and throws Victor, who deviates in a way that he touches Eros got landing. So Victor and Eros are knocked down, Eros takes a little collateral damage and the Grey Lord is squished as well. Then the defender moves and puts a damage boosted round into Eros who is still barely alive. That is, until the Stormblade Stormgunner comes around and finishes him off in a very The Matrix way move. No! I don't believe it. <sighs> believe it or not, you piece of shit, you're still gonna burn. <laughs> <sighs> Striker wins! In hindsight. So I wasn't able to upkeep against Striker, but oh well. It was a bit lucky with the throne Victor only deviating for one inch, but Erusk shouldn't have been that close to the front in general. However, I wanted to slap superiority onto Mika to keep my chances at winning. There were other things that went horribly wrong in the first turns, showing my lack of training with Erusk. If I sent the pikeman running at the enemy, I should have feated, which would have cut my losses. And superiority should go on the jack before it activates. His feet turn was well timed in comparison and really neutered my offensive with arm 23 storm blades and war jacks. I was lucky he didn't roll too well for his jacks when damaging mine, so that the mechanics could fix the most of it. I'm trying to view it positively. The game was rich in power attacks. Three successful ones and one winning the game, which is good. Oh, and the reference made by the signalist, Strikers Heavies, is a reference to the Black Hawk Down movie, Strikers Humvees. All in all, this battle was very fun, swinging back and forth, especially on the left flank, and I have to state it here again. I have the most fun if my opponent allows, almost requires me to play to the best of my abilities, and I'd rather lose a good fight than win a boring one. And with that advice, farewell. <laughs>